Welcome to the video folks, thank you for tuning in. I wanted to cover uh, the most common and frequent mistakes that I see on our site visits and when we track the data, um, when we get our eyes or when our supervisors, contracts managers um, identify problems on site. Now some of them are very trivial, some of them are minor, minor faults, even the, the grading or the scoring from NHBC would class that some of the RIs is quite low down on the uh, risk ratio. But they're very costly and that frustrates the life out of me. Something very simple to get right in the first place can end up be being very costly it, retrospectively when you've got to try and put it right. So with just a little bit of thought, a little bit of consideration, you can make your life so much easier and keep more of the money that you are earning in your pocket rather than just throwing it away going to put right things that you could get right in the first place. So I've tracked the data across all of our sites and there's a common theme with the common things recurring, recurring, recurring. How I get the message across to everyone individually or collectively is a challenging part for me and hence I thought I'd do a YouTube video and I'd highlight some of the most common faults we find, what I would do about it if I was on a trail and what you can do about it if you watch this video uh, and hopefully apply it to your business, your gang, or you as a bricklayer. So I'm gonna jump on the whiteboard. It's been a minute, I ain't done one of them for a while, but um, hopefully you find it useful, and hopefully everyone that works for us finds it useful, and ultimately, you only get paid to do it once. That's, that's very simple. So the more time you spend laying, and the less time you spend making good, the more money you will see in your paycheck at the end of each week, fortnight, month, whatever it is you do. So without further ado, I'll go through some of the things uh, on the whiteboard, some of them won't be, but you'll catch a drift. Um, and we'll see if we can eradicate them from our business and we'll track the data. Maybe I'll revisit this video in a few weeks and see if we have uh, reduced some of these faults we're seeing. So without further ado, let's get on the whiteboard. Right, so here we go then. The most common faults we see in our business and I know what you're gonna say, nah, we never do that, but you'll be surprised. Bricklayers, five, 10, 15, 20 years experience, still making the same mistake. Now, what I see quite frequently, which isn't always an easy win for your inspector, is the wall type under the window reveal. Now, I know it seems alien, and I know it can be hard because you haven't got your windows in position, but your, win your first wall type starts 225 below your window. So if this is your window, and like I said lads, I'm not trying to tell you how to suck eggs. I really am, because I get it. I know, I know, I know. I hear that every day. Yes, of course you do. So the first wall tie has got to be 225 below the window. And then obviously 225 all the way up. And two, two, within 225 of your window reveal or your door reveal. So it's, it's an absolute classic for the NHBC inspector to find this one. So if you want to put it right, it's quite simple, I suppose, but you've got to wait for the scaffold to come down. You shouldn't be walking underneath it. You've got to drill through. You've got to put your tie in. You've got to bed it. You've got to resin bond it. Can't just be, you know, how you're going to muck it in. So what is relatively straightforward becomes actually quite difficult to rectify. So everyone needs to be aware this is your window, your first wall tie is 225 below. See it all the time. So that's the first one. Another pet peeve of mine is weak vent spacing. So please lads, for the life of me, I hate seeing one weep hole either side of the brick. It just looks horrendous. Weep, hole, weep holes every 450, start from one end, chase them down, stick to your 450 centers every two bricks. Couldn't be any easier but there is a new regulation that has just come in to do with gas boxes. So let's just say this is your normal gas box here. So normally you just space your, your weak vents across every 450, hopefully, but there's a new, new regulation out and it's just on gas boxes, not on electric boxes, so just gas. So you have to have uh, your first weak hole a minimum of 180 mil from the edge of the reveal. So it can't be any closer than 180 mil. And then once you've set them, uh, a minimum of 180, minimum of 180, they can be no more than one meter apart. And it has to be two. There has to be two weep holes, minimum of 180, and no more than a meter across the two of them. So this is just on gas boxes. 
It's to do with the gas coming up through the service duct. It honestly pe penetrates the house. And if there was happened to be a, a gas leak or anything like that, and you've got weed poles across here, then it could come up and potentially fill the cavity. Someone likes a fag and the house blows up. All right, I know it's very unlikely, but that's the, that's the, uh, the, the theory behind uh, this new regulation. So minimum of 180, minimum of 180, maximum of one meter between the two. And if you do it like that, it actually works four bricks in between and it's perfect. So, but that's coming in, that's in now. So um, just on gas boxes, don't go doing it on electric because you'll be chopping in wheat pens. And don't fake them either. Right, another one which is very easy to get right and very hard to rectify is the party wall tie spacing. So it's 900 mil. There's no sort of maximum or minimum. Uh, it can't be 890 and it can't be 910. It, I know it's difficult and I know when you put them in and you lay the block and they wiggle around a little bit, but just take your time to, once they're bedded in, just to just to adjust them. I'm sure if you mark them on the wall, then you, you know really shouldn't be too much movement in them. But it's, no, it's 900 mil, so let's say that's a block. 900 mil. And it's pretty simple, really. If you start on a perp, um, shouldn't be any too much of an issue really so what you need to do is just chase your wall ties round so every two blocks you can put them in so then obviously you need to come in the centers and you don't put this one in unless it's 900 don't think oh we need to put a wall tie in and say it's a six seven five you cannot break the 900 mil rule so that is quite straightforward if you just set it out but if you start getting them wrong, you're having a nightmare because you can't just move one because then it breaches another one or extends another one. So just stick to your 900s, chase them from one end, and then if, if the last one's gonna be 870 or whatever, leave it out, omit it, that's cool. Just stick to your 900s and chase it back round and you'll be golden. You won't have to be drilling through, moving ties and all the rest of it. Very simple, but very costly. Another one which is often picked up on CML, uh, it's not actually looked on in pre-plasters. So in CMLs they go into the roof space and they check the loft and that is quite often when they will see the restraint straps in the gable. So we've worked on a few of our sites with the carpenters and we've actually had a gauge rod made um, with block work gauge so they can sit on our block work course and then they can adjust their restraint straps. Um, to block gauge so when we're coming up the gable they work to a full block and they sit on there and HPC don't want to be seeing half blocks or cut blocks uh, so bit of communication check them before you go up there just measure them everyone knows block work gauge multiples of 900 uh, and it's pretty easy to work out really so one of our chippies even made a gauge rod uh, 2.6 2.7 long whatever it is uh, with a hinge in the middle, he can fold it up, chuck it in his van. So every time he comes to his gables, all the block work it can go up gauge and all the restraint straps work perfectly and it actually saves you time. And if you get these wrong, now they are a tough one to put right. NHBC want to see it behind a full block. And if you don't get it right first time, you're not really going to put it right. It's incredibly difficult to do. So speak to your chippy carpenter make up a gauge rod between you. All we've done is we just marked the gauge rod up in multiples of 900, and then we made it the same, we made it work blocks from the top and the bottom. So it could be upside down, they weren't gonna get it wrong, and we put a hinge in the middle of it, and happy days, uh, all our blocks work, all our straps work perfectly block gauge. Really useful tip, and saves you a lot of time. You ain't got a nick under it, and put a piece in and make it solid save you a lot of time that will. The classic internal walls. Now NHBC like to see lint walls bearing on full blocks. So when you're setting up your internal walls, if you start with a full block at your internal door opening and chase the block back, put the cut against your outside uh, thermalite work, then it always works to a full block under the lint wall for your internal walls. Now if you get that one wrong, incredibly tough. To sort out you know it can't be on a three quarter it can't be on a half can't be on a piece so start with a full block there's a video somewhere on my channel i'll put a i'll put a link up uh, on the screen somewhere and you'll be able to see go back and you'll see full block at your door reveal chase it back out works golden every single time now 
Interestingly enough, and we have discussed this with NHBC, uh, you can use full briquettes to bear lintels on. What they don't want to see is blocks or briquettes being cut because it affects the structural stability of the, of the material and obviously their load bearing. So you can, sometimes we have clients with windows on different heights. They might have the door at 2.1 and they might have the windows at 225 higher. So it can get a bit messy and a bit confusing with running briquettes and you don't want it to look like it's all you know, uh, a patchwork quilt. So you can use full bricks as your bearing. So just bear that in mind. But if you start with a full block at your internal walls, you know when you get to the top, it works a full block under your lintel. Now that is for two meters and 25, not 2.1. But I think you'll find most house builders have moved away from internal lintel sitting at 2.1 because it avoids the, the piece of timber across the top. But get that one wrong, that's a nightmare. You're taking things down, rebonding them. So watch my other video. Another common one for us is the wall ties at the raking cuts of a gable. So you've got to have two ties within 225. So if this is your raking cut, for example, going up your gable, you've got to have, you've got to have a tie within 225 and then another tie within 225 all the way up the gable. And all the way back down the other side. Gets missed all the time. So this isn't new. This is a very old detail, so check it out. I'll try and put a link on the screen or a picture on the screen so you guys can see. Uh, but again, right pain in the ass to, to fix this one. So just measure now, pop your tie in, and then another one within 225 of that book as well. So you should see your gable tied in all the way up both sides. And when you get into spandrel panels, you're even supposed to have a tie across the bottom in the last course of masonry with wall ties at every 300. Again, that's something we're very hot on. We have had some gables fall over a few years ago, which were ironically down to restraint straps. But ever since then, I've paid close attention to, to the gables because God forbid anyone ever gets hurt. But um, fortunately, that wasn't our fault. Unfortunately, no one was hurt. But um, again, it's quite a common one. So keep an eye on your wall ties running up and down your raking cut. Inspectors are getting hot on that now. Hopefully you found that useful. So like I said, they're the most common things that, uh, that myself and the supervisors see across the board. And we obviously pay uh, close attention to these items, but we're not gonna capture it all. So if I can try and get the information out to the lads, then hopefully it will see a downward trend in, in some of these things. So I'm gonna keep track of it revisit it, like I said, and then uh, see if there's a downward trend. See if anyone actually pays any attention to what I say. Probably not. So I'm moving this weekend, so I'll get some footage of the, of the house uh, before I move in, before it, makes a, before it looks a mess. Uh, almost there now, it's Friday the 13th, so ominous day to move in, but hey, yeah, suck it and see, I'm sure it'll be all right. Um, but as ever, thank you for watching. If you found this useful, please give the video a thumbs up. If you didn't, maybe abuse me in the comments like you normally do. So peace out, see you next time out.